Hello again, YouTube. This video is made up of clips of my full-length video where I show you how to install a fan as well as LED can lights and do so on separate switches so you can control them independently. This video will be clips focusing just on installing these LED can lights. And hey, subscribe. Adding recessed lighting, I have these Halo 6-inch LED can lights. They're really nice because they just fit right up onto the sheetrock of the ceiling and you don't have to add a can and these use a lot less power. This particular model, you can pick three different color settings. There's a model that's about $12 more than this and you can pick five, but I think that was not worth the $12 and extra per light um, because I'm doing six lights, possibly eight lights. We'll see. We'll have another circular drill bit that's six inches so we can drill a nice little hole in the ceiling for the spotlights without creating too much damage and extra work of course a stud finder i have this also i got off amazon it catches the drywall on um, dust when you're drilling the hole so that there's far less cleanup of course for this project what's also important is your wiring for this project we're going to use what's called romax it's a bundle of wires, and in this case, we're going to use a 14 by 2 or a 14 2. 14 refers to the gauge of the wire, and 2 refers to the number of wires inside plus a ground. So 14 by 2 will be black, white, and a ground. 14 by 3, for example, would be black, white, and most likely red, and a ground. Now, when you head over to Lowe's or Home Depot or your local hardware store to pick up the wires, you'll also see 12 by two in addition to 14 by two. Those are the most commonly used in homes. 14 by two is the most commonly used for things like lighting fixtures and whatnot. Now, a good way to know whether or not you need a 14 or a 12 is to know what your breaker calls for. A 14, is 15 amps where a 12 can support 20 amps. So if you go down to your breaker and look at the switch for this particular zone of electrical, you'll be able to see what amperage it's using. In my case, the zone for the living room is using a 15 amp breaker. So I don't need 12 gauge wire. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm recording this video after the fact but this is the end result. I have my can lights. And in this situation, you're gonna to wanna to figure out what works best for your area. In this case, there was a fan here and there was a fan there, which I removed to replace with the fan in the middle. But for this project, we're talking about the can lights. So you'll want to get a stud finder and see way, or which way your joists are running. Mine are running in this direction and the fan in the middle was right up against a joist on the right side. So I knew that this would be an empty channel to put the additional can lights in. So of course, I started by measuring the space that I needed to fit the three lights in, even distance from the wall and even distance between this wall and the other wall over here. Of course, whenever working with electrical, you want to remember to turn off your power um, so we're down at the fuse box. I'm working up in the family room. That's number 12. So I find number 12 and switch it off. If your project is similar to mine, a good first step would be to remove the existing ceiling fan or ceiling fans. For the sake of the length of this video, I thought I'd quickly mention that this electrical box or the mounting bracket, if you will, for the fan had to be removed so that the spotlight could sit in this place. The existing electrical box that you see cannot be pulled out through the hole, it's too big, so it just sits up there in the sheetrock out of the way, no harm done. I of course want the can light to be the same distance from here to the wall on that side as well, and here. So the first measurement I'm going to take is from the hole over the wall. Let's see how far we are. Side of the wires. 
to the start of the hole is 55 inches. That's easy to remember. The end of the hole is about 59 inches. But these are end up going to be six inch holes anyways with a six inch spotlight. And now from what I've read, a good distance away from the wall on that side is three feet. But I will take the length of the room and divide it evenly and make sure I put my cam lights in the spots that look best. I'm going to go ahead and do my measurements. My wall is, well, my from wall to wall is 180 inches, so 90 inches is dead center. So if I come out 45 and put a light in there, that'll be even distance all the way through. So 45 plus 45 plus 45 plus 45 is 180. So I'm going to go ahead and drill all of the holes for the rest of the ceiling. Another tip when working with things above your head, wear glasses. Now back at the fan hole is my first hole. I know I'm going to have to make it bigger. It's not big enough to fit a six inch can light. So I've got my six inch drill bit, but I'm going to move the existing wires out of the way. And the stud is here. So I'm gonna line up the very back of the drill bit here so that it's gonna cut a bit, little bit bigger of a hole on the outside on this side. Now, what's important is you don't want to go forward as you regularly would with a drill bit. On these ones, we wanna go, since it's drywall and it's very soft, you want to go backwards. So you can see on this drill bit, the teeth point that way. So if you go the regular way, which is forward, it's going to just eat up the drywall. So you go backwards. Um, so that we're not tearing into the drywall. And this is going to collect my drywall dust as it comes down, but still wearing eye protection. Trying to line it up. And we want to go very slow. This isn't a race. This is harder than it looks. So I've got a nice hole started, and I'm gonna keep going slow. My drill bit seems to be catching. So, try it again. And that's made a nice ring. Now, I'm going to go, I was a little bit off center, it looks like, unfortunately. Uh, but now you can go forward and you shouldn't be eating up the ceiling because it's already been cut, that little circle. Well, that little guard to catch the drywall sure does make it hard to see. My hole's a little off center to the right and I went into the joist there a little bit. I got my saws all out and rounded the corner I'm hoping that the light will sit up in there nice and flush now. I'm hoping. Okay, day two, I have all the holes drilled for the can lights. One thing I'd like to point out when doing these cuts, use a stud finder. We knew that because the fan was here, right next to a stud, that these holes were going to be near a stud. I did use the stud finder, but I just thought, oh, It'll be okay. So I went off the measurement of exactly in this case from this tape line that I put up to here, the middle was 35 inches, which was the same on that side. So I just went for it, but I ran into the stud there. So I recommend using a stud finder so you don't run into the stud in this case or in your case. All right, so from here, I'm going to run the wires for the spotlights. I'm going to cut and run a wire from here to here, from there to there, there to there, there to there, so on and so forth. So let's get to it. Fish tape. If you don't have some, 
and you're doing wires and through walls, there's nothing better. This particular one is a 50 foot spool. You can get smaller ones, but man, this has saved my life on this project. This of course is just a fast forward video of me cutting the wire to length and then running it up through the ceiling. Depending on your circumstances, it might be easy to just run the wires without a fish tape, but otherwise you can tape the end of the wire to the fish tape and help it help you push the wire through the ceiling or through the walls. Now that the wires have been ran to the correct location, the next step is wiring up your LED halo can lights. I also went back to Lowe's and got a different can light. This one's not the flush kind. Um, my wife was concerned that if we had that flush kind, that it wouldn't look consistent with the can lights we have in the kitchen. If I can find one, here we are. So these are the can existing can lights in the kitchen. If we got had those flat LEDs that I got before, it wouldn't look consistent and it might look like it was a DIY project where these are less like the flat kind, they're, or I should say they're more like the kind that we have. So that's what I've gone with. These ones are a little more expensive, by about $9 a light. So, but they do have the option to select from five different color choices. But once set, it'll probably be good. I also got these because they support um, the ability to dim. And I got a dimmer switch too that at the end of this project, that'll be the last thing I try, um, but hopefully that works great. I won't be able to get a good camera angle of the wiring of these lights from up on my ladder and in the ceiling, so I thought I'd explain it here on my counter. So each of these little halo lights will come with the light itself, and it will connect to this little section right here, and you just wire nut that down or tighten that little nut and inside each has this little connector. So inside the box is a ground, a white, and a black. And each of these support up to three additional pieces. If you happen to have more than that, you can pigtail them, but we shouldn't have to work with or worry about that in this video here. So we'll have the one going to the light, of course. Then in the far can lights, we'll have just one coming in. Then in the middle one where they connect to the existing wiring, we have the left, the right, and the center can light. And all of those will be powered off this one little box. And that's really how you, pretty easy. These ones are the push connect kind. You just strip your wire and push it in there and it will hold on to it. So you don't have to worry about twisting wire nuts and spinning them around together. So it should be pretty easy. I forget what these are called. It starts with a W. Warlog or Warlow, I don't know, something like that. Anyways, these are the new kind of um, connectors. They're more expensive than regular twist connects, but they just happen to come with the lights, so this should be easy peasy. And of course, you will run the wires into the box through these switches, and they do have the option to bust these out if you needed to run another wire in, because you have support for two. If, uh, in the middle one, I'm probably gonna have to pop this one out to add my third wire coming in. So, hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and wire this all up. I cut the sheathing back about three inches or so, because that's how much is gonna come inside the box here. But you can see how you just push and connect. It's nice and easy. Wish they sold these for cheaper. I'd buy them all the time. Once all the connections are made, you just close this little flap and you can push this whole unit right up in there. That's what she said. Now, you can mount this to the wall if you want to. You can just leave it sitting up there in the dry, or in the ceiling as well. Since I have this nice access to the joist, and these are six inch hole, or wide holes, I am going to try to mount these to the joist there, but you do not have to. So next would be to just connect the light. I just did one screw, I don't need to do two. It sits up on this little lip of the joist. And I have easy access to the color settings should I want to change that. Last is just to connect these to back together. There is a little vertical piece right there. I can't get that on video. At the top, you can see a part that sticks down that will just line up with this connector here. 
then you just tighten down that plastic nut and here we go. Now the can light itself on each side has these little flaps and you just make sure you lift those up and push it through the drywall or have it hold onto the drywall and it'll just sit there nice and snug. Now these lights have a lot of play so I can sit and measure and make sure they all line up and look visually the way that I want them to. Just continue that for all can lights. Well, that took a lot of persuasion, but I have the fan light or the can light from the left, the can light from the right, both of those coming in through the side. I purchased some of these little clips here, or these inserts. You can get those at Home Depot. They're pretty cheap. And then I have the wire from the switch coming in and they all go to the correct black, white, and ground. Now to just get those tucked away and finish putting up all the can lights. Just down at the fuse box, turning them back on. Daddy. Now if we flip the switch, we have success. One, two, three, four, five, six can lights. Flip the power back on at the breaker and now I have light again, but this time I have the dimmer switch set up. So if I turn the light on, of course, my can lights come on. And if I pull the switch down, right here, this little dimmer switch lever, I will get my dimmed light. That's for setting the mood. Oh yeah. That'll be really fun. Well, if you made it this far, thank you for watching my video. I showed you how to install can lights without attic access. So thank you for watching my video. Subscribe if you wouldn't mind. And again, as always, if you didn't like my video, feel free to go make your own video. Hey. Do you want to know what will make my life better and yours? Subscribe.